Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another matchup here in the IPL Season 1. This matchup is in the winner's round 2. It is the best of 8 from the winners, and it features a Zerg versus a Terran. We've got Root Cats taking on VT Spades. It is a best of 3, and we're going to start things off here on Zell Naga Caverns. Let's introduce our players and check out their positions. We have got... Our Terran player, VT Spades, spawning as the Blue Terran in the northeast of Zelnaga Caverns. And that means, of course, our Zerg player, Root Cats, will be in the lower left-hand position, the southwest position, as the Yellow Zerg. Now, just a little bit of history about these two players as, uh, as it relates to the IPL Season 1. Root Cats made it here by defeating LG Og in another best of three. And I do highly, highly recommend those games. Now, Root Cats is an unorthodox Zerg. He plays pretty much different than any other Zerg that I think that is out there on the circuit right now. Some Zerg are super macro Zergs. Some Zerg are super aggressive Zergs. Cats has this ability to really mix them all together and just do anything that he really wants to. And uh, I know we've been looking at that hatchery for a long time as I want to talk about the history of these two players. I'll now focus on what's going on here in the Terran base. We do have the barracks going down. Cats had a game with such an absolutely ridiculous strategy in the last round versus Og that I highly recommend that you go and watch that. So if you haven't, then pause right this moment, right? Have you have you paused yet? And go watch that game before you check out this series. You may know the outcome because you're, you're seeing this right now, but what you don't know is uh, possibly the crazy stuff that Katz was doing in, uh, in those games. He is going up against our Terran VT Spades. Uh, Spades was in Korea for uh, a, a little while. He wasn't able to qualify for any of the GSL events, but uh, just going out to Korea and getting a chance to play on the those servers without lag and getting to interact with the players is, is really, really, uh, it can do amazing things for you. So let's take a look in this game. Oh, I did want to mention VT Spades also defeated EG in control, who did do very well uh, recently at uh, some live events within the, the past few months. So, you know, keep in mind that uh, he took out a very formidable opponent here uh, to make it here into the best of eight for the IPL season one. Taking a look at things now as we focus all of our action or our eyeballs to this game, we have a command center going up. The hatchery did go down for Cats. He also uh, put down a Roach Warren, has his gas up and running, 128 gas right now. Has not researched uh, his metabolic boost yet, which is essentially Zergling speeds. Uh, for those of you, as Tasteless would say, for, for any StarCraft noobs out there, uh, you obviously want fast Zerglings, especially versus the Terran. So uh, right now, Terran putting up a bunkers for some additional defense at their wall uh, in case any Zerglings come up there. They can hit safely from there. And just in case there's a Bangling bus, uh, they might be safe in that bunker. We have two more barracks going down. So we're going to have some heavy bio play coming out of VT Spades while he expands behind it. And, uh, you know, getting this command center with uh, with the proper build can be great in so many ways. Even if you're getting pressured by the Zerg, you can still produce S uh, SCVs out of here. You could still, once it's an orbital, get mules, uh, use scans. So uh, it, it's really beneficial to actually build it in your base, go with the, the orbital, and then uh, land it over. Of course, you'll see the pros do it a lot. And uh, unless you know for absolute you are in the lead, a lot of times you'll see players not build at the actual location where it might happen. Later on in the late game when there's an army, and uh, you know, a lot of times at the gold, you'll just see maybe a, a command center go up right there, but a lot of times it depends on the control. So we do have some roaches from cats making their way up right now. We got about five roaches incoming here to the ramp. Now roaches uh, actually can do really good in a situation like this because of where the bunker is. He's just gonna poke up there and come back. Now if he had any sort of vision at all, and it looks like he's gonna go directly for the bunker. Now the SCVs are going to repair. A very smart move there by Spades. They're going to have to get out of position. Couple roaches do go down. If you have vision up here, the roaches obviously can hit things like this supply depot, uh, maybe even the barracks. 
unfortunately, there is uh, an Overlord over here, but nothing within uh, this area. And I have to say, I'm a little surprised. A lot of times we do see uh, Overlord scouting, say, you can see that he's just basically covering his base, and every Zerg plays a little bit differently. But this, this Overlord could have been, say, right over here, where you're going to float it into your opponent's base later on. And then he could have said, well, hell, if I have vision up here, I can do some serious damage. So floating it to right here... Uh, would uh, you know would help and uh, allow him to take something out like that but he's just gonna have a light roach contained now remember what I was talking about earlier with the orbital command here you see in practice exactly what I was talking about the Zerg is outside hold on the Terran looks like they might want to push is it concussion shells done uh, let, no it is not done yet and uh, is it researching uh, it's not so mostly marine upgrades with stim and combat shield going up of course Stim is huge on Marauders, too, so uh, sh shame on me. Uh, but you do see the Orbital up. It's inside the base, and he doesn't need to expand yet. He'll be able to transfer over a lot of these STVs, but the Terran's going to move out because he has to expand. At some point, we're going to see the Zerg taking a third base. So uh, this is a smart move. He's got to apply some pressure. One Roach will easily get him taken out, and Stim is not yet complete, so uh, this is going to be somewhat of an uphill battle here, but there is just simply not enough Roaches, and really Spades can thank his Marauder count for that. Marauders, of course, doing a ton of damage versus armored, almost double what they typically do. So, uh, you know, getting out a few extra Marauders and then pushing against a bunch of Roaches was really smart things to do. Uh, of course, we don't have a Baneling Nest up. We just have that single gas right now. I take that back. We had a Baneling Nest right there. So I guess I was going to say, well, he could have... Uh, he could have attacked with those Banelings, maybe done a little bit more damage to the Marines, uh, Lynx, uh, and then Roaches sort of cleaning up on the Marauders. Now, uh, I, shame on me for not actually seeing if the scan caught the Banelings. Uh, we do go down and look at Vision, and uh, I do believe that he at least caught the Baneling Nest, so he's going to know very much that uh, that is there. Now, we could have a possible attack here. There are no bunkers here at the front which is going to mean that the Zerg is going to get a pretty decent attack here. More Banelings coming into play, and we've got a lot more on the way. I know there were some. There we go. So some slow Banelings coming up. Now, does he know about this? Marine is going to move forward. Oh, Marine sees a lot of Zerglings, but he does not see the Banelings. He is going to be able however, get ready for this attack. We're going to see a nice spread here with the Marauders up front. They could be meat shields for these Banelings. Obviously, the Marines are going to be the targets, and here come the Banelings, and a lot of them, too. Zerglings coming in from the other side, and we're going to take out a wall of Marauders, let the Zerglings do the rest. Banelings trying to get in, they will take, oh, they do get a few Marines there, but a great split by Spades. There is nothing more on the way, and if I could be critical on any player in that particular battle, I have to be critical of Cats. I feel like uh, maybe wasting those Banes on those uh, Marauders up front was not the smartest move. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, that's what he decided to do at the time. And as you know, StarCraft II, Brood War, it was a lot about making the proper decisions. Now, with the Marauders up front, uh, it will slow down the Banelings as they get hit. So if you can micro, in fact, and uh, make individual Marauders hit individual Banelings, uh, it can do huge, huge damage to the potential that a Baneling has. And remember, you know, Baneling can take some damage, but once it's dead, it's dead. Uh, just like, I guess, any other unit, but uh, that's the only way it can attack. So he's going to go ahead and uh, Katz is going to take care of the gold. And uh, let's take a look at the production tab to see what we have going on. Plus one we uh, weapons for the Terran. Twelve more Zerglings coming out. We do have uh, Baneling Speed on the way as well. And we have no upgrades yet on the Zerg. Let's check things out. We do have two Evo Chambers. There are upgrades finally going to start with plus one melee attack. I assume we'll see plus one carapace uh, so fire up here in uh, this other Evo Chamber. I'm assuming he didn't make two. Uh, and now we do have a push here by BT Spades. He's going to push forward. And now when I say push it, I don't necessarily mean he's going to push into the base of the Zerg. Uh, what I do mean is that he is going to push forward because really what the Terran wants to do is they want to draw a line. Hold on, we could have an attack coming in right here. A bunch of Zerglings are going to move up. We will get a stim forced out of the Terran player by those Zerglings, so that worked out really well. Not a whole lot of energy on these Medivacs. In fact, look, they're in the low uh, single digits, so that means we will have uh, some hurt 
units here. They'll, uh, they won't be able to mass a bunch of energy as well. And we've got a lot of Banelings. Now, what I think is going to happen here is Katz is probably going to wait for his Baneling speed to finish and then go for an attack here because what he doesn't want to have happen is he doesn't want a planetary fortress to build right here. And uh, essentially, it's going to be much harder for the Zerg to fight into. However... Um, this uh, gold did just go up, and hold on, Banelings could be getting into position right here, and he's going to go ahead and attack. Oh my god, just as the Siege takes move up, Banelings are going to take a huge hit. We do have several Marines going down, but there are not enough Zerglings there, and the Siege tanks took zero damage. The Planetary was also up. Now, here's the problem with what just happened, is because Katz put his gold up, the Terran could counterattack. In fact, expect possibly a scan right here by the Terran to see, is this an opportunity? He just threw away a lot of units. Um, if he has nothing right here, I might be able to make sure this gold never gets up. So he is bringing more tanks to the front, more Marauders. He's got one Siege tier, Planetary in full effect. The Hatchery is about to go, and uh, he does look like he wants to mobilize here. Several Banelings. 18. Zergling's going to move up. Sees that he's taking control of the Zelnaga. Now, what else is coming out aside from these uh, Zerglings and Banelings? Right now, we, we strictly are literally on Zerg Bane play. And we are getting plus two melee attack. And here comes an attack from the Terran any moment now. As uh, there's the scan. He sees absolutely nothing. He's going to go immediately for the hatchery. We do have a bunch of Marauders up front. Banelings are just going to pile through. Wipe out all the Marauders. In comes Zerglings from the back. Should be some Siege Shakes here to help up. Medivacs do pick up some lone units right there. And believe it or not, despite the fact that Terran threw away a lot of units, they are way in the lead here. Taking a look at the army count as well. 135 supply to 176. We do have some links come out to try to, to, uh, to, try to repel this attack. But uh, imagine this. Spades didn't even have his tanks in play at that point. So uh, when, you, when you consider that the tanks weren't even in play... That, my friends, is uh, was very, very damaging to the Zerg. And these are throwaway units. The whole idea is to spend cheap units and continuously throw. Here we got another attack from Spades coming in yet again. Banelings will get taken out. A few Marines, they are given away to the Baneling gods. And uh, so much stays alive. The Siege tanks are out. And there it is, the GG, as Root Cats falls in game number one to VT Spades. And that means that we move on to game number two here for IPL Season 1, Best of 8. I'm DJ Wheat. See you in game number two.